In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, welcome to worship at Forest Hills today. As we gather for worship, we have many reasons to celebrate. So today you will notice um, that there are flowers in different places and uh, we are, have many things to celebrate today and uh, these flowers have been placed up front today because or in order to celebrate our children. And um, so just want to encourage you to take a look at your bulletin and read about those celebrations in the life of our church. Also, as we look ahead to next Sunday, I'm not trying to rush anybody. Believe me, I'm definitely not trying to rush anybody. Uh, but as we, as we look ahead to next Sunday, we celebrate that one voice, which is a vocal ensemble, will be leading us um, in worship through music. And so that's something we have to look forward to. And then also as we gather today, we celebrate Mother's Day today. And so we would like to take a moment to recognize all of the mothers who are here and express our appreciation and our love for you. So at this time, I would just ask, if you are a mother, would you please stand so we can appreciate you? From Psalm 95, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us give a joyous shout to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. Let us sing him psalms of praise. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God. Good morning. I want to extend my welcome to you as well. Would you please stand with me as we sing hymn number 176, Fairest Lord Jesus.
please remain standing. Good morning again, Forest Hills. And uh, this morning, a wise blessing from Proverbs, uh, chapter 31, 28, and 29. A wise blessing. Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also. And he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. So thank you, moms. Those who are here and those who couldn't be here today, you have excelled. And may God bless you this morning and every morning. Because every day is Mother's Day, right? <laughs> now, please find a mother uh, and thank and bless her. And children, rise up and come forward for the children's message after the blessing. <laughs> Everybody's so happy this morning, doing well, find a spot. All right, um, well today is Mother's Day and it's a really special day for a lot of moms out there. Um, first, I just wanna ask, did anybody do anything special for their mom this morning? What did you do? You made her a card. Um, made tea and breakfast for her. Ooh, made, bed. ooh, breakfast in bed. I didn't get that. Oh, we have some surprises that we haven't shared yet, right? Okay, anything else? Yeah. I gave, my, I gave my mom a coaster that I made in school. Oh, fun. So a lot of people made things in school for their moms. Yeah. Well, today is a special day, and I bet um, you guys don't know something about all of your moms. There's something that they have in common, and I could promise you that every single mom, each one of your moms did this before you were even born. So I want you to think hard. What would be something that every single one of your moms, I just know, did before you were even born? It was about you, though. What could your mom have done before you were born, but just about you, each one of you? Maybe she got a nursery ready. Maybe she got little baby blankets ready for when you were born. But she did something else. What do you think? Yeah, she was pregnant. Yeah, she carried you. That's right. You're absolutely right. But while she was pregnant with you, she probably did this. I did it a lot. She prayed for you. And I think some of you are thinking it, right? She prayed for you before you were even born. She probably said prayers um, that you were healthy and that you came out strong. She probably prayed for you as a child, even though you weren't even born yet. She may have even prayed for you as an adult, which you aren't an adult yet. I know I pray for Carter. I pray for him when he's an adult. I pray for the woman he's going to marry when he's an adult. <laughs> I don't know where she is. I don't know who she is. She's out there, and I pray for her. So your moms pray for you. Your dads probably pray for you too, and your friends and your pastors. But prayer is so important, and it's something you're going to hear a lot about today. I want you to know that God hears your prayers. He hears them today. He hears prayers for today, things you're praying for right now, maybe a friend or people at your school. But he also hears your prayers for the future, things that haven't even happened yet. Okay, I want you to bow your heads and pray with me this morning. Lord, we are so blessed that we can pray to you directly, that you're a living God and that we can speak to you and pray to you. We thank you so much for our mothers on this special day. We thank you for our family, our friends, the people who have um, been in our lives, the women in our lives. I thank you for each of these boys and girls here this morning, and we are so blessed that you've given us um, this beautiful day, and I pray that you work in our hearts this morning. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
This is our time to pray together as a congregation. We will do it quietly and individually. The handbells will start us, then we will pray together. One thing I would like for you to do, or for us to do rather, is that when we finish praying, and I say, in Jesus' name, I want everybody to say a hefty amen. Thank you. In John chapter 1, verse, uh, verses 17 and 18, the Bible says, Jesus is in the bosom of the Father. Then through our faith, the Holy Spirit comes to us and picks us up and puts us gently in the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is in the Father, we are in him, and we know that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. As we pray individually and quietly, let us exp uh, express our gratitude and thanksgiving to God for all his blessings upon us. Let us thank God for our salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us thank him for the Holy Spirit who is our enabler. And then finally, let us pray thanking God for the establishment of Forest Hills Baptist Church. At this time, we will pray together. Our Father, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
In this section, uh, I will uh, lead us as we pray. Now, the focus of this section is commitment and for our pastor. The other day, I captured an image of trees with my iPhone. As I looked at the pictures, I, I discovered that I had taken a picture of a variety of trees. Some were so beautiful. They were straight, very, very tall. Others were crooked. Others, uh, some um, had their branches nipped off at the top. And some, they were like this. <laughs> but you know what? They, they, all these trees had something, or had one thing in common. All of them had branches and the uh, fruit, produ fruit producing ones had fruits in them. It didn't matter what state they were. All of them produced fruit. Forest Baptist Church is like my picture. Some members have an easy life. Others, not so easy. Whether we are straight or bent over or however we may be, whether we have, we have been given a lemon, whether we have been given five or two talents, our Lord expects us to bear fruit for him. Are you committed to bearing fruit for the Lord through Forest Hills Baptist Church? Let us pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you who loves us so much that you sent your Son Jesus Christ to come to the world to die for our sins so that through our faith in him we will be lifted up unto you. Just like the, the, the beggar in the Bible who when he died, angels carried him to the bosom of Abraham. But today, as Christians, we are lifted up into the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that as we are in him, the Holy Spirit is in him, the, uh, Jesus Christ is in the bosom of the Father, so all of us, we are in the same place. And we praise you, our Father, thanking you because you have made us, the, uh, made us a joint heirs of your kingdom with our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, because of all that you have done in our lives as a congregation. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you, our Father, for the church as a whole. We pray that each one of us will be the right size for the whole that you have provided for us. Whether we are uh, round uh, uh, pegs, we go to the, to the uh, hole that uh, fits us. Whether we are square pegs, we go into the square uh, hole so that as each, each one of us does what, uh, what he what we have to do, then the, your work will continue to be done. Father, we thank you for our senior pastor. Thank you so much for him. Thank you for the wisdom that you have given to him. We pray, Father, for more wisdom. Your word says, teach a wise man, teach a wise woman, and he or she will become even wiser. So, Father, we pray that you will teach our senior pastor, give him your blessings from above, train him, mold him, establish him, in this work that you have called him to be. We pray for special wisdom and grace upon him so that he'll be able to lead us to where we are supposed to be, led by your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you once again for our church. May all of us become very, very, and very well committed unto you. Father, thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.
from Matthew 6, verses 1 through 9. Beware of practicing your righteousness, righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the, in the corner, street corners and they, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. I want to stand as we sing. <clears throat> So on Mother's Day, I was thinking a little bit about my mother, who, 
as odd as the weather is here. Today, she's not with me. She's in Cheyenne, Wyoming, snowed in, ironically, on the way driving across country to see her mother. So I was just thinking about that and, you know, how much of a blessing it is for those of us who still have mothers and those who don't, who have passed on. Just think of a special memory that you have. Um, while I was thinking of Mother's Day today, I have an old man's disease now. One verse that kept coming to mind, or a passage kept coming to mind about my mother and my children's mother was one about love, about being patient, kind, not proud, always rejoicing, always protecting, always trusting, always hoping, always persevering, and never failing. I don't know about you, but I know my mother had to have practiced a lot of those bringing me up. So join me in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for all that it means. We thank you for the blessing of mothers and the blessings that they've had on our lives. Just be with us now as we return some of our blessings that we have received to you to further your work here at Forest Hills. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, so it is Mother's Day. So I have to share a story. Wasn't planning to, but every day is Mother's Day, right? We're so I can remember, um, and, and this is in some ways a con me being vulnerable, a confession, if you will. Um, I can remember when I was younger and uh, growing up, and each night there was a book of Bible stories that my mom would read. And, you know, it was really thick, really thick book. And um, I just remember we would read through those stories each night, and, and uh, afterwards, after we read a story or two, she would teach me the Lord's Prayer. And I can't tell you how long it took for me to finally learn, you know, the whole thing. But what I can tell you is that maybe it was age four, maybe five, but at a very young age, I learned to pray the Lord's Prayer. And that was kind of the only prayer, the only way I knew how to pray was to pray the Lord's Prayer. And so when folks would, um, when we would be in Sunday school and that kind of thing, and they would go around <laughs> in a circle and they would ask kids to pray, I'd pray the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> you know, other kids would say, you know, thank, thank you, God, for mommy and this, that, and the other. And, you know, so. But I'll also tell you, um, as an adult, uh, there's been a, a few times in my life when, you know, something has surprised me or caught me off guard. And quite frankly, the only thing I knew to do was to pray the Lord's Prayer. So thank God for mothers who teach us how to pray. And thank God for prayer. Over the last several weeks, we have the emphasis of our services has been around the idea of how the resurrection of Christ on Easter Sunday should impact our lives. And one of the ways that uh, it should impact our lives is through our prayer life. And so what I want to do this morning is sort of walk through a story that we actually find in 1 Kings chapter 18. So if you brought your Bible with you or if you want to use a Bible on a pew in front of you there, I invite you to follow along with me. In 1 Kings chapter 18, we're going to begin with verse 20. And just to, um, to give a little bit of a background, this is a story about a man named Elijah. Uh, Elijah was a prophet in the Old Testament. In fact, Elijah was a, a very bold and outspoken prophet in the Old Testament. And over and over and over again, God used Elijah to help the people of Israel to get back on track spiritually. You know, which really is something we all need from time to time. But interestingly enough, in the New Testament, it says that um, Elijah was just an ordinary guy. And so what I want to do this morning is just to read this through this story and stop and make a few comments in a few places. And then I'd like for us to think about what it means for us and how this story can, what this story has to teach us about prayer today. So we begin in 1 Kings chapter 18 with verse 20. So Ahab summoned all the people and the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How long will you continue straddling the fence between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. You know, right away, the prophet Elijah just made a great impression on everybody. There are all these people who are gathered. There, there's this king Ahab. There are all these prophets who are gathered around. And then there is the prophet Elijah. And right away, he just, you know, has a great way with words. And he says, hey, why do you keep straddling the fence, Israel, over who is God? If the Lord is God, then worship him. You know, one of the things about prophets is that they, they didn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> I think something comes along with telling the truth a lot that maybe causes that to happen. I'm not sure. But, so we read along. So they're all gathered there on Mount Carmel, and Elijah's just really made a great first impression with everybody. And then in verse 22, it says, Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord, who is left 
But Baal has 450 prophets. So in other words, in the story, he's outnumbered. There are 450 prophets of Baal. So in other words, whatever's about to happen, if God doesn't show up, something's probably not going to work out too well for Elijah. So then in verse 23, Now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it up into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting it on fire. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood on the altar, but not set it on fire. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. And all the people agreed. Notice how confident they are. They just said, okay, this sounds great. This sounds like a great plan. After all, there's 450 of them, and there's just Elijah. So he's really outnumbered, and made me think about a quote by Albert Einstein, which says, what is right is not always popular. And what is popular is not always right. You know, sometimes we can surround ourselves with enough folks who look like we do and think like we do and act like we do that we can convince ourselves that whatever we do is right. But in this case, that's not the case. Verse 25, Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, You go first, for there are so many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it, and call on the name of your God. But do not set fire to the wood. So they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called on the name of Baal all morning long, shouting, O oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no reply of any kind. Then they began dancing wildly around the altar that they had made. So they started praying. Nothing happened. Then they began doing different rituals, dancing and trying different things. And nothing happened. But then listen to what happens next in verse 27. About noon, Elijah began mocking them. Maybe you should shout louder, he said, for surely your God is a God. Perhaps he is deep in thought, contemplating something. Or maybe he is relieving himself. Or maybe he's away on a trip. Or maybe he's asleep and you just need to go and wake him up. So they shouted louder. And following their normal custom, they cut themselves with knives and swords until they bled. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice. But still, there was no reply, no voice, no answer. You know, I really don't even know what to say about Elijah at that point. <laughs> he, he's, he's, um, you know, he, he's definitely not into religious tolerance. You know, he's definitely not a candidate for interreligious dialogue. I mean, he begins mocking these other prophets. You know? I really just don't even know what to, to say, except maybe there was just so much, maybe there was a lot more at stake there than maybe we can understand in some ways. In verse 30, Then Elijah called to the people and he said, Come close. They all crowded around him as he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel. And he used the stones to rebuild the Lord's altar. Then he dug a trench around the altar, large enough to hold about three gallons. He piled wood on the altar, cut the bull into pieces, and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, fill four large jars with water and pour the water over the offering and the wood. So Elijah wants to make sure that this altar that he has created 
is wet. And you can just look around and see everybody's gathered around and they're close and they're kind of, maybe they're sort of scratching their heads, thinking, what's, what's he doing here? And then in verse 34, after they had done this, he said, do the same thing again. And when they poured more water on the altar, he said, now do it a third time. So they did as he said. And the water ran around the altar and even overflowed throughout the trench. So in other words, the entire altar is soaked. The entire ground is soaked. In the trench around the altar, there's nothing but water. And so you know what? There's no way this thing is going to burn. But what if it does? Verse 36, at the customary time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and he prayed. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. And after he prayed, immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up all of the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the ditch. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they cried out, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. Now it's a pretty amazing story. It's a pretty powerful story in so many ways. But what I want us to think about is what can we learn as believers today? What can we learn as a body of Christ about prayer from Elijah? You know, one Baptist theologian once said, one of the greatest challenges facing the church today is motivating the people of God to engage in sincere, honest, fervent prayer. You know, it really is one of those things that's easy to overlook sometimes. It really is true that we sometimes just get busy or life happens or we just get caught up into a routine. And prayer becomes one of those things that we just allow to go over to the side. But if you think about it, in a lot of ways, our prayer life really is our spiritual life. I mean, our prayer life really is our spiritual life. I think that's true for us individually. I think it's also true for our church. And I don't know about you, but, you know, other, th other than the fact that, um, um, you know, I'm not a vocalist or anything like that, <laughs> when we sang the Lord's Prayer a while ago, I mean, I just felt like there were probably angels flying around the steeple and that kind of, it was just so powerful to me. What can we learn about Elijah, about prayer from Elijah? You know, I think one of the things that Elijah reminds us of is that we really are dependent on God. We really are dependent on God. You know? Elijah was totally dependent on God showing up. I mean, he was outnumbered. They poured water all over the altar. There was no way it was going to burn if God didn't show up. In a culture today and a society that celebrates independence, right? I mean, we just had a bunch of people graduate from universities and colleges, and what's our goal? We want them to get a job, right? And be independent, independent. And that's a good thing. But in a culture that celebrates independence, dependence. Elijah reminds us that we really are dependent on God. 
think Elijah also reminds us that God really does want to hear from us in prayer. You know, it's Mother's Day, and um, I try to call my mom, try to call every day, check in and that sort of thing. But you know, sometimes uh, I get busy, or I just think, oh, I'll just call her later, or, you know. And when that happens, you know, around afternoon or evening, my phone rings. <laughs> what is it? It's my mom calling, you know. And, you know, the funny thing about it is I know that's who it is. Because as soon as I hear the phone ring, you know, I think, oh, I didn't call mom. She's calling me. You know, I think in the same way, God really does want to hear from us in prayer. He really does want to hear from us in prayer. And I think when, just think about when, when, when Elijah was preparing that altar, right? He was preparing the altar, he was stacking the wood, and he was stacking the stones, and he was, you know, getting, preparing the calf to be put up there and everything. I think when, when Elijah was doing that, I think what God was doing, he was kind of leaning in going, he's doing it. He's going to pray. He's this is going to be it. He's getting ready to pray in just a minute. But you know, I think the thing is that God is always kind of leaning in that way. I think God's always kind of watching us and listening for us and just sort of leaning in saying, oh, I just want to hear from you. Or, oh, there's, you know, just, I think God always does that. I think that's the posture that God always has. He's always watching and listening and waiting for us to pray so he can do something for us. Another thing about Elijah's prayer is that he prayed with a sense of urgency. Now, of course, you know, if it was just me and 450 pro other prophets from some other God, I would pray with a sense of urgency too, right? But he really did pray with a sense of urgency because he was counting on God to show up. You know, Elijah really wanted those folks to know God. He really wanted them to see who God is. Now, I think about that, and I think about us today. And I think about, you know, all of the statistics and trends, and I'll spare you, but, you know, about church, and so many folks don't go to church, and so many people today don't believe in God, and there's, you know, all of these things that we read about. And as I think about Elijah praying and, and, what, and this, this whole thing that happened and those people seeing God, I think we're called today to pray for people who don't know Christ with a sense of urgency. With a sense of urgency. You know, this story also teaches us to pray with a sense of of expectation. You know, God doesn't always answer our prayers the way we want Him to. Have you noticed that? Or is it just me? <laughs> you know, sometimes when that happens to me, I just think, I just need to pray a little harder. Maybe He doesn't hear me, right? Then after a while, you sort of realize, well, Maybe I'm praying the wrong way. Or maybe I need to pray differently. Because God always answers our prayers. He just doesn't always give us the answer that we want. And so when we pray with a sense of expectation, maybe we should pray with a sense of expectation, not meaning that God needs to meet our expectations, but maybe just that God has some different plans in mind. So I want to ask you this morning, as you think about this story of Elijah and this, this moment when he prayed and God shows up, what are some of the things that you might take away in your prayer life? What are some of the things that we as a congregation can learn from Elijah's prayer? You know, I mentioned this earlier, but in the New Testament... 
we're told that Elijah was just a regular guy. Just a regular guy. Just like you and me. And yet God did so many amazing things through his life because he prayed and because he was a person of prayer. So this morning I want to leave you with a couple of questions to think about. The first one is this. I wonder what God wants to do through you that you haven't prayed for yet. I wonder what God wants to do through you that you haven't prayed for yet. And the other question that I like for us to think about this morning is I wonder what God wants to do through our church, through Forest Hills Baptist Church, that maybe we haven't prayed for. Would you pray with me? Father, for the gift of prayer, we give you thanks. For the faithfulness of Elijah, we give you thanks. Father, as resurrection people, may we find ourselves in this story being reminded of your desire to work in the world through us, through prayer. Father, for the gift of prayer and for so many other gifts that you give us, we give you thanks. Amen. Our hymn is number 450. I need thee every hour. Let's stand once again. Please be seated. Before we leave, just something we'd like to share. Yes, God showed up. To, is this on? Yes, God showed up and spoke to Casey Ray and said, Today is a good day to let it be known that you know me as your Savior. 
Casey is coming in profession of her faith, and she wants to be baptized, and we are just rejoicing and excited for her. Mm -hmm. And um, Neil will bless her. And yes. So well, how exciting. Like, yeah. Talk about a Mother's Day gift. Wow. Um, so if, if um, she comes on profession of faith, um, she says she wants to follow Jesus, wants to get baptized. So if we are ready to uh, affirm her decision, would you please stand? And as we close our service this morning, I'm just going to ask for the family to come forward and join, um, come up front. And I would just encourage all of you to come by, if you will, before you leave and uh, celebrate this with us. Would you bow with me and receive the blessing? Gracious and loving God, thank you for how we can see your spirit at work in the lives of people in this church. Father, we just, we just praise you for uh, this wonderful opportunity. God, what a blessing this is. This is our blessing. Father, we just pray that as we leave here, as we prepare to depart from worship, God, may, this, may your spirit continue to be with us. May the joy of this day continue on in our lives throughout the week. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.